Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on Fear the Walking Dead Season 7 Episode 4. As is the norm with all my videos, I won't be holding back on any spoilers, so please do keep that in mind. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. Episode 4 is about Sarah, which is about all you really need to know to work out how I feel about this episode. I couldn't care less about Sarah, therefore I do not give a shit about this episode. I don't know why the writers thought it was a good idea to make an entire episode about Sarah, but then I don't know why half the stuff the writers do, why any of it they think is a good idea, but there you go. So this episode is about Sarah, so let's talk about it. Annoyingly, the intro for this episode really got my hopes up because the intro has a whole host of characters. I think in the intro we see Luciana, Daniel, Al, Wes and Charlie, I believe, as well as Sarah. So I was thinking, finally, we've got an episode which focuses on more than one character. We might actually see people talk to each other and, you know, I might see other characters besides the one character each episode seems to focus on. But nope, after the intro, it's just Sarah on her own looking for her brother. So, yeah. Fantastic. Sarah spends much of this episode looking for Wendell, and I don't know why or how she's outside at the start without wearing any protection, because I'm sure in the intro Al says to her, oh, you can't go outside because there's a there's an unexploded uh, nuke out there, and I, I think it might still be dangerous, or... I don't know, she said something about there being, you know, radiation or something in the air, like, don't go outside, we can't go out and then she's just out wearing her normal clothes. But I don't even see the point of, of questioning the logic, you know, behind radiation on this show anymore. I really don't. It, none of it makes any sense. So, yeah, there really isn't much point complaining about it anymore. Honestly, I wonder how many times I've used the phrase it doesn't make any sense in my four videos that I've done so far on Fear the Walking Dead. Maybe someone should just make a, a video clip of me going, it doesn't make any sense, it doesn't make any sense, and just see how many times I say it, because I bet it's a lot. I'd like to see it. Yeah, I, I bet it's going to be a couple of minutes long because I seem to be saying the same thing every single week because the writing doesn't get any better. Whilst looking for her brother, Sarah comes across a car which has Rufus the dog in it and it's at this point that she meets Emil 2.0 or to give him his proper name which we learned this episode, Josiah. As we found out during episode 2, Josiah wants to find Morgan and he says to Sarah that you need to help me find Morgan, you gotta help me and obviously at first Sarah refuses because she's like no I'm not, I'm not giving up Morgan but then he says that well I know you're searching for your brother if you don't help me find Morgan, I'll find your brother first and then I'll kill him. So Sarah reluctantly agrees. Josiah then sends Rufus to track Wendell's scent. And instead of, you know, just kind of following the dog and accompanying it, hoping that he finds something, Josiah then spends the next couple of minutes burying two random walkers who he killed just a moment ago who attacked him, which I don't see the point of this at all. It's not like these walkers were anything to do with him. It's not as if, you know, they were old friends or people that he knew. Instead, he just comes out with some dialogue and he's like, oh, we got to bury the dead. What, do you do this for every walker you kill then? Do you bury every single walker that you kill? Do you know how time consuming this is? What is the point? Why? Why? You think you're a bloody bounty hunter, yet you spend all your time burying bloody walkers. It's amazing you can ever find a bounty, you just spend so much time burying the undead all day. I'm surprised you even managed to do anything. What's the point? Josiah then explains why he has to kill Morgan, and you know, it's kind of predictable and cliche. We get some more dialogue about him making promises and how he has to keep a promise, and uh, we went over this last week and we're doing the same thing again. But thankfully, what I really liked about this, and one of the few things that I did like this episode, is that he says something like, oh, I made a promise to my brother, and then Sarah comes out and says, well, he won't hold you to it. And I was just kind of thinking, yes, Sarah, yes. That's what I said last week. Stop doing these stupid promises to dead people. Stop trying to fulfill stuff just because I made a promise to my great nana that I would never wash my right foot. And then my foot is so damn stinky, but I ain't gonna wash it. Yeah, again, where did that come from? I don't know. But anyway, you know, it, it annoys me. So thank God that Sarah came out and recognised that. Because I was just kind of like going to scream. I was thinking, oh, not this again. But she come out and, yeah, said exactly what I was thinking. So she's already gone up in my estimation. You know, my opinion of her has gone up. Sarah then questions Josiah and says that, how are you going to kill Morgan? How are you going to do what your brother couldn't? And then he remarks by saying, I will do what my brother couldn't do, or, you know, something along those lines. But, I mean, I hope you have a better plan than you did in episode two, Josiah, instead of, you know, just walking towards him and getting shot, because 
Yeah, you're not going to kill him if you do that again. So I hope you thought of something better between your last appearance on the show, a better idea for taking down Morgan. Rufus eventually alerts Josiah and Sarah to a dude who's stripping walkers and taking their possessions. And I'm guessing he's part of the same group that have been doing that all season. And for some reason, after he takes their possessions, he's putting the walkers in like some kind of pen. I don't know why, why he's keeping them after taking the stuff. No idea. But anyway, they go in there and they see that Wendell's wheelchair is in there which causes Sarah to freak out massively because she thinks, oh, he's dead. So she basically runs out and then tries to escape in the car, Josiah's car. And, you know, Josiah manages to catch up and get in there. And he's like, what the hell are you doing? We had a promise. You, you know, you can't just say you're going to help me and then run off. But she's like, oh, my, my brother's dead. So it doesn't matter anymore. Let's go. I need to get out of this the kind of thing. And then what happens is they struggle and then they crash. Exactly like what happened in episode two with Grace and Morgan. I don't know why everyone on this show can't drive cars like we only had a crash a couple of weeks ago i swear in the season finale in the season six finale i'm pretty sure the woman who died at the start is because she had a punctured tire or whatever so her car broke down and you know something happened because of that and then i'm certain in the same episode the was it the tank or the whatever the car that sarah is in i remember that getting a puncture as well on the road and they had to stop and fix that whilst they were fighting walkers it just seems to happen all the time why do people's cars break down every episode? Like, I get it. It is the post-apocalypse. Cars aren't going to be in the best of shape, but just stop doing the same thing all the time. Like, every week, there's a fucking car crash. It's like deja vu. I feel like I'm watching the same episode over and over again. Just stop repeating yourself, please. I mean, you'd probably say that to me. Stop repeating yourself, Josh, because all I'm doing is repeat myself every week, but there you go. Anyway, remember at the start of the video when I said that Al said that there's, like, a an undetonated nuke near them? Well... Guess what Sarah and Josiah crash next to? The undetonated nuke, of course, because everything on this show is a coincidence. Everything on this show, there's always something that just shouldn't happen, you know. Oh, there's this unexploded nuke somewhere out there, which I can't find, but just be careful. Oh, we happen to crash right next to it. What a surprise. Ah, ah. That's just such crap storytelling, it really is. So Josiah and Sarah are surrounded by walkers in their car and it looks like there's seemingly no way out. At which point Josiah says to Sarah, perhaps one of the dumbest lines I've heard on Fear, and that's saying something considering how bad some of the lines of dialogue are on this show. So basically Sarah is, you know, upset about her brother being dead. And then Josiah comes out and says that, oh, he's still alive because if he wasn't alive, you wouldn't be searching for him because you'd feel it. We, we, what, what? So by that logic, it would mean that by default, if you're searching for a missing person, someone who's missing, you're searching for them, don't worry about it because they're alive. Because if they were dead, you wouldn't search for them because you'd feel it. So if anyone goes missing, you know, if you look for them, yeah, they're alive. Because if they were dead, then you would somehow feel it and you wouldn't look for them. So I've just solved every missing person's case on the planet now. So... Thank you for that advice, Josiah. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's really bad. Like, it's just a really bad line of dialogue. I mean, what does he mean you'd feel it? What is fucking Sarah Jedi now? Wendell, hear me. Use the force to pull your wheelchair towards you. Like, it's so dumb. It's so dumb. And, you know, yes, I know some people will say that, oh, Josiah is referring to, you know, the phenomenon that some twins have where they believe they can feel each other's pain or, you know, they can feel the other twins alive or whatever. But even if that was what they're going for here, it still doesn't make any sense in relation to Sarah and Wendell because at the end of the episode, Sarah says that her and Wendell aren't even related. You know, she comes up with some story in which she says that, oh, when I was younger, I was a baby, I couldn't breathe. So they put me next to Wendell in like the incubator or the whatever, the, whatever they're in, in the hospital. And I just looked at him and I copied his breathing and I breathed much better, which again sounds like an incredibly, well, BS story. I mean, I don't know. I've never worked in a children's, you know, unit in, in hospitals or whatever. So if there's anyone who, who knows about that, please let me know. But it just sounds kind of bizarre that a child is not able to breathe and they put him next to another child. And this child who's like just come out of the womb, who's like a day old, is like, oh, so that's how you breathe. I'm going to copy you. Is that is that how it works? It doesn't doesn't sound like it would work to me. But anyway, yeah. So she comes up with this story. So she wouldn't even feel that he was alive anyway. If you know this phenomenon is true about you know twins feeling you know each other and whatever blah blah, blah. twins feeling each other. Jesus, that sounds like a 
a porno or something. God, forget that. But anyway, um, I've lost track now. Anyway, yeah, it it just doesn't make sense still in, in relation to Sarah. You know, you'd feel your brother is alive who isn't actually related to you and isn't your brother. So you wouldn't feel him anyway. But but you would feel him. It, it's a uh, bad line. Bad line of dialogue, it really is. What happens next should be absolutely no surprise to anyone because just as these two look like they're going to be surrounded by walkers and they're going to be eaten, who turns up to save the day? Of course, it's Super Morgan once again because that's what he does on this show. Whenever anyone needs help, all you got to do is call Morgan's name three times and he appears and saves the day. Super Morgan saves the pair of them and then Josiah wants to have a fight with Morgan because, you know, he still wants him dead. And I did find it kind of funny when Morgan was like, what, I killed you? Because, you know, he was just kind of like, what the hell is going on? You know, I thought you were dead. Of course, he didn't know that he had a twin. So, yeah, that did mildly amuse me. But then we also get this terrible dialogue from Sarah who's watching going... You're not a killer, Josiah. Don't do this. You're not a killer. And it's like, you've known this dude for like less than a day. What makes you think that he's not a killer? He wants to kill Morgan. He said that he would kill your brother if you didn't help him. You know, what has given you the impression that this guy is not a killer? You don't know anything about him. <sighs> anyway, Josiah gets the better of Morgan and he could just kill him then and there, but... Of course, you know, evil villains, they don't like to just kill people, do they? They like to come up with some elaborate way of killing them, which is always usually the hero escapes from, or it goes wrong. In this case, Josiah is on top of Morgan, and yeah, he could just easily kill him. But he's, instead, he's like, no, I won't kill you, but my brother will. And he takes his brother's head out of the box, and he tries to get it to eat Morgan's, the head to eat Morgan's face. But unfortunately, the head takes a bite out of Rufus the dog, which then causes them later to have to put Rufus down. So in conclusion, fuck Josiah. Fuck Josiah. He could have killed Morgan. If he had killed Morgan, he would have been my hero, right? But he could have killed him, but instead he took his time, he wasted time instead of doing it, and the dog ended up dying as a result. So not only did he not kill Morgan, the dog died because of him. Screw this guy. What a dick. After Rufus dies, Morgan and Josiah are suddenly friends now because Josiah has realised the error of his ways and... It's just suddenly, all of a sudden, forgot his vendetta against Morgan and the fact that Morgan killed his brother and everything's okay now. We're friends now, my dog died, so we're friends now. Anyway, the three of them then head to Strand's place, the tower, and then Strand comes out and he greets them and says, oh, you can't come in, none of you can come in. And he says something to Sarah like, oh, you can't come in, Sarah, because you weren't there for me when I needed you most. And I honestly have no idea what he's referencing here. I don't even remember Sarah and Strand even talking to one another. I mean, I guess they must have done, but season four, five, and six are just like a cloud in my brain. I really can't remember much about them because, yeah, they're not very good and I just try and forget it. But I can't remember these two particularly having, you know, a great deal of interaction. I can't remember them having a scene together where something important happened. So what what is he talking about here? What does he mean you didn't have my back? Can anyone fill me in? Because I can't remember at all what Strad is talking about at this moment in time. The reason that these three went to the tower is because that I think Morgan said that, oh, I, I think I know where Wendell is. He might be in the tower. And then Sarah says to Strand, is Wendell in the tower? And Strand says, yes, he is. But we never actually see Wendell this episode. So whether he is or not is up for debate. I mean, Strand could just be lying about it. Why he would lie about that, though, I don't particularly know. But yeah, it's up for debate. And then he basically says that you can see Wendell if you want. I can send him outside, but he's never going back in. It's a one-way ticket. He can come out. None of you are allowed to join. And if, he want, if you want to see him that desperately, I'll send him out. But that's it. He's being kicked out. He's not coming back in. So he gives that option to Sarah. Sarah does the right thing and says, nope, I'm not going to see him in that case. You know, leave him in the tower. Let him live his life and, you know, let him be safe or whatever. And just don't tell him I'm here. I'll go on my own way. I'll go away and let's pretend this never happened. And you know what? In my mind, that actually makes her a better person than Grace and Morgan in episode two when they were offered the chance to have their baby taken to the tower, to have baby Mo, well, the, the baby they're caring for, baby Mo to be taken to the tower and, and you know, have a, a safe life there. And they were like, nope, we're going to keep him. He's ours, even though at that point in time they had no food. And, you know, for me, I think that was an incredibly selfish thing to do. And Sarah has done the opposite. She's done the selfless thing to do. So, yeah, she's a lot better than those two, in my opinion. And you know what? Like I said, I don't particularly care either way about Sarah. You know, I can't say that I was excited to watch an episode about her and it still isn't a great episode. But 
Yeah, she's all right. I, I, I'll admit I do like her a bit more after watching this episode than I did previously. I mean, I certainly prefer her to, like I said, to Morgan and Grace, but yeah, I still wouldn't choose to watch another episode about her. So that happens, and then Josiah says to Morgan and Sarah, I'm going to head off on my own now. Nice meeting you. Bye. So we had this really weird twin brother plot kind of ham-fisted into this season, only for when the twin brother Josiah actually does appear in an episode, you know, and actually gets more than one line of dialogue like he did in episode two, for him to just go, yep, I'm done now. It was nice meeting you. Bye. What was the point? You went through all this trouble to bring back the same dude who played him, do this stupidness with older twin brother and all this nonsense for him to just be like, right, yeah, I'm done now. See you later. Why do it in the first place? Finally, the gas mask people, the same ones who were stripping the undead in this episode, they just so happen to find that unmanned nuclear warhead, and now it's theirs, and I really don't care. I really don't give a shit at all. Like, they've got a nuke. So, so what? Good for you. I don't care. This is another problem with Fear the Walking Dead, which I don't think I've mentioned so far, is that... In season six and this season, the show is like always kind of setting up the new villains before the present ones have even had a chance to shine. I mean, last season, Ginny was the main villain, yet we had all these hints about the end is the beginning and Teddy's group, and it was setting that up. And then this season, Strand is the main villain, but then these people are in the background. So it's like we already know when Strand is defeated, these people are going to come along next, and then they'll hint at another villainous group when they're the main villains. It's just like, look, just focus on one antig antagonistic group, sorry, at a time. You've got Strand, you Strand. You're really not using Strand enough. You Strand, and then you can go about mentioning these people and showing them getting the warhead and all this kind of shit. I mean, yeah, you can have a few mentions to them, but why do I need to see this now? The only reason they're showing me this now is because at the end, uh, I don't know, the finale, or a season 8 premiere this group are going to set this off and it'll be like ah oh, remember in an episode in the start of season 7 where we showed those guys getting that nuke well here they are they're back you know we planned it all along because we're so clever <sighs> no don't need to be pushing the new antagonist whilst you've already got one on the show can you imagine if on the walking dead if during the savior arc we had like these random scenes of the whisperers just walking along you know alpha walking along and kind of looking at the saviors and watching the war going oh we'll get them soon when it's over or daryl just stumbled across a mask and was like mm, what's this oh this will come in handy soon the next season when i find out what this mask does and just stores it away for the next season i don't know it's just like it just takes attention away from your current antagonist and it just makes them feel not important because you've it's like you've already You've already got this other group on the horizon after they're, after they're done. So already I'm thinking, ah, uh, Strand's going to be taken care of at the halfway point in the season, or he's going to be taken care of some way through the season, and then this group are going to come in. So Strand isn't even that, that important. So he's just there. He's just there until the next group, the scavengers, whatever they're called, I can't remember the name, the stalkers, is it? Sorry, until they come along, and then they'll be the antagonist. You're just kind of ruining it. You're ruining it. Don't stop doing this. Stop it. Yeah, there you go. It's not a good episode. It's not a good episode. It's really poor. I think next week, is it about Dwight, maybe? And I do like Dwight, so fingers crossed that one is okay. But, ah, uh, yeah, what's going on this season? Fear's just gone back to being shit, to be honest. It's gone back to being shit, you know? I liked 6A. I gave it the benefit of the doubt in 6B, even though I didn't like it, because I know that some people still did like it, and there were some episodes from that season which were okay. So I was thinking that, Maybe 7A will, will be good again, like 6A. But nope, it's absolutely terrible. And I am actually enjoying the well beyond a lot more, which there you go. That's a segue into my next video, which will be about the well beyond because I binged through like three episodes of the well beyond the other day and I actually liked it. I can't believe it. Maybe that's just because fear so shit that the well beyond seems amazing in comparison. I don't know. But when I'm enjoying that show more than fear, you know there's a problem. You know there's something wrong with Fear the Walking Dead. So yeah, it's not very good. But anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you agree with me or did you like this episode? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know. And also let me know if you can feel it. Let me know if you can feel if your family members are alive and if they're out there. Let me know. I need to know this. This is important information. But anyway, uh, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.